if I were to describe what technology has done to time, it's, it's we keep inventing things to save us time. And as we do, we feel like we have less time. Yes. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the, I find one of the disorienting, but probably helpful features of the technology that we all share is every now and then the iPhone will tell me how many hours I spent on it every day. <laughs> Too many. And it's not good. It is not good, you know? Uh, and the other part of it is um, that the, the immediate, the urgent drives out the important. And so I can be sitting and, and studying something or reading something that's really deep and profound, and then my phone lights up. Um, and I feel like I have to look at that, even though the truth is, um, there's a wonderful analogy that I, I, uh, I try to keep in mind, and I like to, it's not a Jewish teaching, but, uh, but it could be. Um, I, really, I think I first saw it in, years ago in Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. But he quotes some professor who went in front of his class, and, and if it's not in that book, forgive me, but I think it was. He quotes a professor, goes in front of his class, and he takes a glass and he puts three big, ro big rocks in the glass. And he says to the class, is the glass full? And they all say, yes. And he goes, no, 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 it's not. And he pours gravel over the rocks. He goes, now is it full? And they go, well, now it's full. He says, no, it's not. And he pours water over the gravel. He says, now, if I had poured the water first, I would never have been able to put in the big rocks. If you start, he says, with the little things, you never have time for the big ones. But if you do the rocks first, you will always have time for the gravel and the water. And I try to remember that in the morning when I'm studying or writing, I try to think, I will answer all the emails. I know I will. But if I answer all the emails, I will not go back and do the writing and the study. So you got to do the big rocks knowing, I promise you, that you will have time to put in the gravel and the water. Um, but that's a hard discipline to stick to uh, because technology tries to make the gravel and the water increasingly attractive uh, and the rocks take work. That's beautifully said. I mean, it's hard to really sit and study things because it's not just, I mean, even if you take reading like different kinds of things that I would call rocks, the internet has this way of, I love what you said, it drives out the urgent and gives you, or drives out the important and it gives you the urgent. And even with reading, you know, it, it, it gives you the new, the novel, the recent, and there's like this certain class of ideas. And I really struggle with this where there are things that later in my life, if I wasn't studying them every day now, I would severely regret them. Yet every time I sit down to read them, it's not the highest leverage thing I can be doing right now. Yeah. I, I tell people, whenever somebody says you have to read this, I say, no, I don't. There is no <laughs> such thing as something you have to read. Unless you want to say you have to read this, it's Anna Karenina or it's War and Peace. But if it's the latest post from CNN or it's an opinion piece in the New York Times, I might want to read it. I'm sure it'll be interesting. It might be illuminating. But believe me, in a year, you won't remember that you read it. Maybe in six months, maybe in a week, maybe in a day. And so every time someone says, oh, this you have to see, I always, my immediate reaction inside of my head is, no, I don't. And I never, say, I never send something to someone and say, you have to read this. Um, because I know that that's just not true. And we, again, we so um, saturate ourselves with this, with ephemera that we have lost, uh, to some extent, the ability to pay attention to things that really matter. And one of the ways, by the way, that I suggest you do this, um, <laughs> and by saying I suggest you do this, is one of the ways I do it, okay? It may not work for you. I take walks early in the morning, and I listen to books on tape. And I put my phone in my pocket, 
and I turn my notifications off. So I have no idea if someone's texting me or they're not texting me. I'm just listening to the book. And until I'm done with the walk, I don't look at my phone. I'm just walking in the morning listening to the book. Um, and amazingly, I have done this now on and off for years and years and years. And guess what? I never got a text that said, you know, you won a million dollars and the Nobel Prize if you react within three seconds. <laughs> Every text I ever got, it was okay that I answered it once I got back to the house. So I'm telling you, it's actually possible to do. It's not easy, but it's possible to do. You just have to get in the habit of doing it. And, and also, you have to educate the people around you. It's usually just a few people, right, who always expect an automatic re answer that at certain times of the day or for certain reasons, you might not answer immediately. And, and that's because you're doing something else and you're allowed to do something else. You're a person. Before there were these phones, we didn't expect this, that someone would always be at your beck and call night and day. This is a new thing. Yeah. You know, we're talking about 